Well, you can just take back if you took on g6. So, rook g6 had to be played. Gives black right time to prevent everything somehow. Or at least it should. Isn't it just to run with this one? And it's not a problem if I also run with the a pawn. <coughs> just run. Run, run. Well, you don't need. You, can, you could play this one, it shouldn't be a problem, but why not? Well, after this one. <sighs> We're talking very theoretical, or uh, <laughs> but this this is not. Uh, Whoa, rook a five. It's not a fighting move because you can just play rook b eight if you want to. Yeah. I believe. It's just there's barely any space for the black pieces. That is a huge problem. It is actually uh, kind of. <laughs> it's like a back rank play. But uh, if it's uh, Magnus makes uh, obviously so makes it easy, just takes here and. Uh, and he keeps everything queen c5 with the, after the check. Um, well, just run with the c pawn. An incredibly natural move. Is there something? There might be. This is a trick. What is your trick? You want to take on d6. But even this doesn't work because you can just take this one. And then rook b8. Rook b8, or if it takes with the queen, <coughs> and he can actually just take and uh, or not take. Uh, he can play this move. It's actually also mate, I think. What a cool! We are even with even with the piece down. White is still winning. Yeah, this is quite cool actually. The back rank. See yeah. the g6 pawn. You see, you see why Wesley pushed g6. We didn't understand at first that it was so dangerous. The b7 pawn falls ah. and it's all over. This, but it, it can mean in any either any way wants to. There is also after rook a6, uh, it could also yeah, I can do the different things. I'm sure. Tough times for the world champion, trying to hold on to this position. Rook j8 preventing rook takes g7. That was the last move by Magnus Carlsen. And now Wesley has the option of playing uh, different things. Bishop b7 looks tempting too. Just to right take this to one. Capture on f6 and rook h7 mate. If he goes here, a um, little mm -hmm. bit careful about bishop queen uh, rook b6 because then the queen might suddenly enter afterwards. Running with the c pawn looks incredibly uh, natural. And here. Re just running again. If, if, if. Well. And that's. That, that must be resigned, so I'm not. Uh Always the same idea on the back rank the C pass pawn together with rook b8. I think this is kind of the um, quite cool line. Um, well, if you play this move, I just so this. If you take there, that's not well. You, you cannot take there. You have to take back. This was kind of a fighting option, actually. If the bishop gets back, captures his f5 pawn, at least the c8 square will be covered. This, uh, I'm sure, this is lost too. But this is at least. Uh, not so lost. Uh, not not that simple. Well, I'm sure this is lost too, of course. But um, thing is that Magnus can Wesley so could probably trade rooks and just run with the king is not getting out. But um, I think. After rook a5, I think it, the simplest is just to take this one. Mm -hmm. Take this one too. With something. And, uh, Does this trade of rook, uh, the trade of rooks, do you think it gives some extra hope for black? <laughs> or, really. it, or is but it th becoming worse now? It, it, it's absolutely nothing for, for uh, no contemplate the a pawn. But uh, the white king's position is a little bit more open, but I don't think it's in any danger the white king here. The queen is very well placed on either c3 or c5, I think. 
It's important perhaps to cover the G3 square, preventing checks on G3. Hmm. It's just that uh, things like this is just can just take it. <laughs> and then there it comes to the back rank. I think so. Yeah, this would be game over again. It's not, it's not completely clear because... Uh, oh, some checks! I missed that. But, uh, I think you can just go here. Queen A2. Wow. No more checks and if the rook is captured, C8 queen or rook. C8 rook is a mate. Uh, uh, different ways of winning. Oh, um, the rook. <laughs> He's thinking that's probably a good decision because uh, here is no reason not to be 150% sure. Uh, just just say there you can calculate everything to the, the bottom. That's true. Good, good tip from Grandmaster Simon Einstein. Even if your position is completely winning, take the time to calculate everything properly instead of wanting to show off with your brilliant tactical skills and win the game in 10 seconds. <laughs> I think it's better to be uh, sure. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And and this, this is not a shame to think. So it's not like, oh my, he has to see this, the winning immediately. Mm. No, you don't have to. And you don't have to play that, fast. Uh, and the thing is that it's, it's, it's such a crushing win too. This mm. is a completely crushing position. Uh, 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 like Magnus is being crushed. Yep. It's also is. possible to play something like this, I guess. Let's say the pawn runs and just move the rook somewhere. Mm -hmm. This seems to be an option too. Beautiful. Once again, rook at seven mate at the end of the line. Seems to be quite controlling everything. <laughs> queen takes f6, prevent a1 queen. Yeah. Just controlling the square as well. Really, really painful position for the world champion. But uh, as Hikaru and Maxime pointed out, they thought that Magnus was asking for trouble by risking. Yeah, they actually were, were a bit skeptical about Black's um, opening play, weren't they? Yes, they were critical of his opening play. Mm. And uh, they said that Magnus was provoking Wesley. So we have been quoting Magnus during the entire day since he was mentioning that he had no trouble whatsoever, no problem at all in any previous game against Wesley. He thought that making a draw was fairly easy if he wanted a draw, but he didn't want the draw. He wanted to be more ambitious. Uh, sometimes uh, when you are, he plays C6. Sometimes when you're on a winning streak, as Magnus is, very good form and so on. Sometimes it's actually good to lose a game because then it hmm. uh, st strikes you back down on earth again. <laughs> And, uh, Reminds you that you're still a human. Exactly, because sometimes you may think you're a god and, and you can <laughs> just do anything and, and you relax and that's a definitely a dangerous uh, feeling. Do you think that that's what happened to Magnus? Uh, it, Thinking uh, that everything works. Well, it, it, it he is, was disappointed with his two previous draws. He wanted to play for a win but his opponents didn't really give him a chance. Yeah, it, it is a phenomenon that's not unknown that you sometimes get too confident actually. Yes. I'm just looking again. Rook, if the game ends like this, did we, didn't we just look at this? C7? Yes, we did. Even the even losing the piece, blundering rook takes D6, was still winning for white. Uh, is it? Isn't it the line that we look uh, at? <laughs> or it's not it's winning anymore? Bishop D4, Bishop takes a five. Here. Uh, so what, after, what did we just look at after? Okay, let's not let's not go that optimistic. Uh. C7, maybe not yet. So rook A6. Does it make a difference? Can you just throw in? Rook C1. Rook C1. It doesn't really... Mm, does it change it the fact change. that after c7 the, the bishop is hanging? Exactly. The queen is defending both the rook on b7 and the bishop on d6. That's why c7 is a move that we are doubting whether it works to sacrifice a piece. And Magnus just gave up actually. He just and gave it's up. over. Magnus he resigned after c6. Wow, that means that suddenly 
from a tournament where we had a sole leader with a point difference between Magnus Carlsen and the rest of the field, it is now a joint lead here at the Artibox Norway Chess Tournament with Magnus Carlsen and Wesley So leading the tournament on a plus one score. Plus one I had to calculate and also it changes the, the thing Liran withdrew from the event. Some of the players had played against him, as Vichy mentioned, he only has one free day, that's tomorrow. He doesn't have another game oh. coming up with Ding Liren. But yes, this changes everything. Suddenly, the tournament is wide open. Yeah, probably it's good for the tournament, actually. Definitely, and it's good for us chess fans. I know the, the Norwegian TV, uh, they, they cover only one game. They only focus on Magnus' yeah. game. They don't care about the others. So uh, they, they do check the other games, too, but of course, the main focus is Magnus Carlsen yeah, the main focus in Norway. Is there. And, uh, and uh, we focus, but I think it's just good for the tournament that Magnus uh, actually lost. It's not good for the Norwegian audience because they love to hail Magnus. But, uh, but, but he maybe can still win the tournament. Of course, this doesn't mean that Magnus doesn't have a good chance of claiming the title this year. But now, finally, there's a race for the first place. Yes, uh, even uh, that is the case. Tell us on social media what you think about today's game. Do you think that Magnus took too much of a risk? Do you think that he was provoking too much, Wesley? Or what went wrong in this game? Use the hashtag Norway Chess to let us know about your opinion on today's main game between Wesley So and Magnus Carlsen or the rest of the event. We will be joined by Wesley So very shortly. He will first be interviewed on TV2, so we are waiting for him to join us and let us know about this decisive win against Magnus. His first win in a classical event, isn't it? Uh, it is actually. His first win. I was just, while you were talking, I was just looking at this line just to uh, see if Magnus will uh, resign show the because same. of C7. I was just wondering if, it's, if this is the reason. It's very, very forced. And this seems actually to be just in time for. Uh, and here, I think this is resignable, actually. Mm. Still, I, even with the piece down, the threat of d7. It's just one tempo behind. But uh, it's typical Magnus to resign, even though uh, he kind of finishes the, the pain and get out of the situation as quickly as possible, rather than letting himself being uh, been looking. He would look quite foolish if this was the end, actually. Yeah. And it just got get over with it. And the players are still in the playing hall, analyzing on the board, discussing some of the variations. But it's good to see that Magnus is not so upset. He didn't run away from the board. Yeah. But he's holding his hand. Held, is he? No, not really. He's analyzing. That's, uh, uh, that's nice. But uh, I think he accepts that uh, when your, your opponent really has played well. Of I think, course, uh, yeah. Sometimes he gets very upset when he's done something horrible. And in this case, it wasn't a one move mistake. It was. It wasn't really. It was slowly, steadily being taken over. Right. He was actually being outplayed, but yes. it was something critical. He, he lost a, po a pawn. The pawn sacrifice is what Hikaru and Maxim also criticized in that right. moment. He went for bishop d8. We can show that moment where Magnus decided to sacrifice a pawn with bishop to d8 instead of going for something more solid with bishop f6, which yes. was Hikaru's suggestion. That, uh, that this seemed like a critical moment, but the question was perhaps if then there is b6, I guess. I'm not sure what, why I didn't play in bishop f6. I think Mons is struggling with the uh, bad harmony of his pieces. And now this bishops look stupid for a little while, but not uh, necessarily for that. Well, maybe it's only for a little while. The moment he manages to play bishop to g5 and f6 and get the bishop back to f7, everything is saved, I think. Yes, and the pawn doesn't doesn't. The main get thing dropped. is that he does lose a pawn. Hikaru said that he thought that Magnus's approach was a bit similar to Fabi's when he went for dynamics, sacrificing a pawn for, for the purpose of a dynamic play, but there was not enough compensation simply after queen b5. Bishop d8, queen b5 is what happened in the game. We yeah. can show how he lost the pawn. So bishop d8 is offering a pawn. This is the move Oops. of Magnus Carlsen in the game, move 23. And after queen d5, two pawns are hanging. Queen b5 seems to solve it because it 
protects the b7 pawn and attacks the b4 pawn but it just wasn't the case what was it going was on okay. here it was simply yeah bishop b6 um, the thing was that i think oh is that this is very ugly and c6 uh, and, and c6 seems just to win and you, then you take on b7 and it's game over you promote the b pawn it's as simple as that no tricks here again the problem for black is that he cannot play b takes c6 attacking the queen because there's a pin on the c file yes and the rook will so fall when you take here. the white queen on d5 with your pawn from c6 the rook is hanging on c8 this was the main problem i'm sure that magnus saw that he cannot take on b4 simply he was hoping for a dynamic compensation for the sacrifice pawn which was not the case in the game if this one goes here which seems to be a bit forced um it's uh 